Hey everybody, and welcome to another APA style results video. In this video, we are going to do a results section for an process mediation model, a simple process mediation model, go through the output from JASP that you get. So here I have JASP open with one of the sample files for a simple mediation. Now, how do we put that into APA style? Well, that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. To get us started, I wanna start out with a disclaimer. My typing sucks, as if you have seen my other uh, typing videos for APA style results, you might be familiar with how bad my typing is. So we are going to do our best. There is a lot of information already in this output file in JASP, so there's not much to it. I'm already gonna be using the output, so we're not gonna be doing any analysis in this video. We're gonna be using the output that we see here to create an, a simplified APA result section. Now, disclaimer number two, this is basic info needed and how you actually present that info is up to you and the journal or the publication to which you are submitting. So there may be discrepancies from how this actual research paper uh, presented this. So here's the research paper, Tau Or et al. 2010, it's about 15 year old research, testing causal direction of the influence of presumed media influence. And here's the DOI, you can grab this particular data file or you can you know search for this. I will put this in the description down below so you can go and look to see how I've set up the process APA results and how they actually presented their results. It's gonna be different. I already know it's gonna be different. So don't come after me in the comments saying this is wrong. You shouldn't do it like this because I looked at, you know, Tor Talor uh, at all and they did it completely different than you. That's fine, that's fine. They have the ability to do something different than me and that's okay. I just want this to be a, oh, we'll call it a, a simplified version, a basics for a mediation APA style results. Essentially the APA, piece of this is really how you present the data from the output rather than anything else, right? So getting quick and to the point, right? So what I first want to start out with is telling you what this is all about. So using the description, right? So presumed media influence studies the influence of news placement on intention formation through beliefs about other people's news reception, presumed media influence. So, you know, the idea is that uh, the news is going to be uh, consumed where Article placement matters, right? Is it a, is it the front page or an internal page? This is from 2010, so I mean, newspapers were on the way out, and but they were still they were still being they're still being printed, really, just in more limited numbers. But in any case, so a front page piece of news versus an internal page. So what's the influence on that? Is essentially what this uh, question is, right? So we have age, condition, gender, importance, intention, and media influence. But we're only going to be using a few of these variables in our results section. Of course, you can present the results any way that you'd like and using that information. But really what we want to focus on is the conceptual path plot and the models that the model that is created from here and the correlations that we get for each of these three arrows, right? So we have condition, uh, which is the randomized placement. So condition for front is the front page. And then the opposite of that would be the internal page. Okay. So condition front page is what we're doing here. Um, and it's a nominal variable. So this is, this is coded as like a one and this is coded as a zero, I guess, or, or something like that. Right. We have, um, the, uh, media influence, which is presumed media influence score, how much participants believed others would buy sugar after reading the article. I guess the article was about sugar. Okay. Uh, so how much subject believes on a scale? I wish they put the scale here, but oh well. And then their intention at the end, right? So intention to buy sugar score after reading the news article. So how much participants believed other people is media influence. And so according to the hypothesis, this is the hypothesized mediation model. In this example, we assume that media influence mediates the effect of front page versus interior page on actual intention to buy the sugar. That is, the placement of the news article affects the intention to buy directly and via presumed media influence. So the belief that others will buy it because it's there uh, in the article and the, the actual intention of the participants. So this is our hypothesized model, right? With the mediation here, we have a direct path from CNF to INT, and then we have these indirect paths. So CNF to MDL, and then MDL to INT. And so that is how we are going to address our results section. Generally speaking, from the results, and here is our model, generally speaking, we use our path coefficients table to let us know what is a significant path and what is a, a, not a significant path. And most of the time, you're going to present your direct effect first. So that is the condition to intention. That is our first one. Okay. So we're going to jump into that, but we got to set up our result section first. So we'll get an indent in here and we are going to say um, to determine the mediation effects of media influence 
on the relationship of, or sorry, between um, article placement, um, e.g. front page or interior, or internal page, interior, I'm just going to say interior, or interior page. I, I, I meant to say placement, lol. Uh, see, oh my god, that, there you go. <laughs> first things first, gotta make errors. And the reader's intentions, intentions to purchase sugar, a process, and it's in all caps, pro process media <laughs> mediation model uh, was conducted. Uh, the path analysis model yielded the yielded these basic but important results. I don't know. Uh, juice it up here, I guess. I'm going to do multiple uh, paragraphs for this just because it's it's easy. For the direct path of condition, uh, condition, uh, and then I'm going to put pur purchase sugar intention. There we go. Of condition on intention, the model revealed a, oh God, revealed a non-significant relationship. And then here I am going to put in beta, our beta, which is the estimate here, 0.254. Okay. And then we're going to put, um, I am going to put my standard error, my Z value and my P value because the P value is associated with the Z value. So this kind of, it's not the same as if you were just presenting betas for a regression equation. You, you want to present the beta, but then you also want to present the test. And I'm also going to include my 95% confidence interval just because um, most journals now are asking for it. So basically I'm going to be putting all five, six of these uh, data points for each of these and each of my paragraphs, just to make sure that all of the information and a reviewer could say, oh, you should get rid of the standard error. We don't need that. Or get rid of the confidence intervals. We don't need that. It's best to put what you what you want first. Um, and the good thing about these 95 percent confidence intervals is that they were bootstrapped. So we know that um, we can uh, we can trust these findings because bootstrap means it was done on a bunch of simulations. And I think a thousand is the I think a thousand is the default value for the bootstrap. But that's cool. All right. So let's come back to this one. Uh, so again, we're going to put beta in and I'm going to do my um, control. Nope. Uh, control. That's read aloud. I don't remember what control command. Control, there it is. Hey. All right. For some reason, my smaller menu wasn't working. So I'm just going to type in beta here. And of course, it gives me all of the letters, but I also want this lowercase Greek letter. And you can get a bunch of related characters. I'm just going to do this beta. I'm going to double click it. Oops. Single click it and put it in there. It is not italicized because it is a Greek character. You don't italicize Greek characters in APA format. So betas can't be can't be above one. So I'm going to ignore the preceding zero here, 0.25. And I think I'm going to just do two significant figures, two decimal places for each of these. Yeah, I think that's good. Standard error is SE in APA style. That's 0.25 as well. Uh, no relation. They're just they just happen to be the same thing. Z is going to be italicized, and that is 1.01, 1 .01, but that is really not significant. P is going to be italicized, and that is going to be 0 0.31. And then a 95% CI is going to be in brackets, and that's going to be, and these can, uh, these will also not be uh, above 1. So negative 2.49 or 25, and then comma 0.81. So you can see I'm, I'm, I'm doing that there. So we can say that... Uh, uh, once the me media influence variable is inserted into the model, condition does not seem to matter in any participants, oops, participants' intention to buy the sugar. Uh, there we go. And let's intention. There we go. Perfect. For the indirect path of condition on media uh, uh, between, no, no, I want to do on, on. For the indirect path condition on media influence, oops, for the indirect paths, so for the indirect or the mediation for the mediation, oops, path or the series of, or the pair, I should say, or the pair of indirect paths from uh, condition through media influence, wow, there we go, to intention, the test rev showed a significant estimate. Yeah, that's not great, but. That's all right. We are going to be using this bottom one down here. 2.41, 0.127, Z value there, P value. Not quite significant. Uh, the test, oh, so not quite significant, actually. I need to modify that. Although our bootstrap uh, confidence interval is does not include zero. So I'm going to say that's a significant estimate, honestly. I'm going to say point P is 0 0.06, but that's okay because we're dealing with estimates here and uh, P values are less important than confidence intervals, uh, especially a bootstrap confidence interval. So, uh, and then we can see that there are significant p-values up here for the pair of indirect effects. So 
from condition to media influence to intention, not necessarily significant in the truest sense of the term, but um, we are going to uh, further explore that connection when we get to the, the, the third paragraph. So for the mediation path or the pair of indirect paths from condition through media influence to intention, the chest test showed a significant estimate and um, I'm going to italicize and I'm going to hold shift, no command uh, to grab all of the things that need to be italicized, these things. I'm going to do command I, control I if you're on a Windows machine. And then I am going to highlight all of this and I'm going to copy it down here. And then all I need to do is change my numbers. So, oh, I forgot it didn't grab my, I forgot to press the, I have pure paste, so it uh, it un unitalicized everything because it just pasted the text. That's all right. I'll try to remember that last time. The standard error is 0.13. Z is 0.90. I'm going to put the zero there. P is 0.06. People look at that and be like, wait a minute. But the confidence interval does not include a negative value. So it is 0.02. That's, that's why it's so close to 0 0.05. That's why our P values so close to 0 0.05 because how close it is to um, and then 0.53, there we go. This suggests that media influence plays a role in instigating or influencing a person to intend to buy a product such as sugar, okay? And then we can say, furthermore, exploring each individual path in the indirect path we can see that, or the test revealed, I should say, the test showed that uh, media influence is significantly predicted by the placement of the article condition, the push memory, the placement of the article, and then I'm going to grab beta here, and this time I'm going to remember to do my hotkey for, there we go, and here I'm going to grab this one, media influence, and it's just 0.042, but that's okay. So we're going to replace all of this information here. So beta here is 0.23, which is very close to what we had before. And then the, but the standard error, oh, no, 0.47. I was looking in the wrong column. Sorry, 0.48, 0.477 rounded. And then standard error is 0.23. And then Z is quite a big number, 2.04. Uh, our P value is 0.04. And our 95% confidence interval is 0.02, but also 0.90. Yes. And that media influence plays a distinct and significant role in increasing participants. Oh my gosh. Sorry, guys. Participants <laughs> um, intentions to buy sugar. And then one more paste. And this beta is really big. It's 0.51, standard error of 0.09, the Z of 5.28, 5.28. Two eight, and then a P of less than 0 0.001. So I'm going to replace that with this value. And then 95% confidence interval. We were pretty spot on here. 0.33 and 0.66. I love it. Okay. All right. So let's wrap it up. One to one final bit of information. Okay. We're going to just kind of steal from this conclusion. <laughs> I'm just going to grab it here. Wee. So this is the kind of, oh, no, wait, I don't, I don't want to do that. Let's just do this. There we go. Um, let's get rid of formatting. Erase formatting. There we go. There. <laughs> Oop, there's an error in it. Nice. Okay, so from all of th these three paragraphs of information, the simple mediation model showed a positive indirect effect of the placement of a news article about a potential sugar shortage on the front page on the intention to buy sugar via the presumed influence of the article on others, other readers' intentions. So, of course, this is their language, and mine is a little bit Mine is a little bit different, of course, but, you know, there you go. So that is a simple way to present process models. What I would suggest is you start off with your direct path, right? You start off with your direct path. That's this one here. And then you discuss your um, indirect path in total. That's this one down here. And then if your indirect path is useful, like if it's close enough, close enough for science, right? This is 1.9. It should be it should honestly be 1.96. I mean, they were close. They probably just needed one or two more, let's say five or 10 more people to make this robust. But of course, the bias corrected percentile bootstrapped is really helpful in determining whether or not this is useful to suggest as a significant finding. But I would I would talk about that next. And then if this indirect path, the predictor variable to the outcome variable through the mediator, if that's significant, then you need to describe which of these two arrows is significant in and of itself. OK, so that's how you do a process simple mediation model. I should put simple up here Woo! to end the video because everyone's watching to the end of the video. Yeah. 
uh, and then you can then discuss this in more detail in your discussion section. But that's how you do a simple mediation model. One mediator, we only have one mediator. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to do a video on moderation and, 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 and multiple mediators. I don't think I have the time for that, unfortunately. Sorry, everyone. But if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, please leave all your feedback down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.